All right, guys, uh, welcome back to my messy shop. And tonight we're going to go over how to set up your Brindley plow. And I'm going to cover some very important things that I've experienced firsthand that wasted a lot of time and caused an immense amount of frustration. So I think we're going to start with a tractor and work our way back. So I bought this 149 a couple years ago at the International Harvester Collector Club auction. So one of the first things I did when I brought it home is I happened to be parting out a 149, or I mean a 1282. Um, this tractor was, I don't think the headlights were hooked up, but it was running. So we went, jacked the front end up, swapped the front end over to the 1282 with the one inch spindles because uh, the, the good tires, the 1282 had the good tires. Um, there wasn't a whole lot wrong with the spindles and the front end on this, but I wanted the big spindles. I put my homemade weight rack on the front, and if you see this burn spot, I welded a brace on the steering box to help with um, steering deflection. Uh, let's see what else did we do. We added the 1282 seat and seat pan. And I trashed the muffler and went to this very long straight pipe. Because I hate how lawnmower stuff sounds. I don't want my cup to to sound like a lawnmower. And I'm a farm boy. I'm used to tractor stacks. And the reason it's really long is because to get the noise up over my head. Because these things are loud. They're a little bit too loud, really. Um... Maybe someday we'll make a glass pack for it. I've done glass packs before, and they sound absolutely amazing. Um, if you're doing this, stack brace. Very important. You don't want to rip the threads out of your block. When you do, you should go have it retapped. It probably won't tap well because it's hard cast iron. It's been through many, many heat cycles. Um, the next thing, this is an original tire to this tractor. I threw the chains on it because... Even though chains are annoying, they're very important for traction. Some Cubby Cadet concrete weights, I threw those on. And at some point we got a flat tire, so I threw uh, some tires on it off of a, oh, 1684 or something. It's a Cyclops tractor. These tires are amazing. If you have an old Cub Cadet like this, and you and you like your back you should you should get a set of these these are these ride amazing compared to the stock ones from the the older 80s so this side we got some cast iron weights because they don't interfere with the plow ferrule as much <clears throat> and then i added a back cover with a tall fill a tall place to fill now if you have a gallon bottle with a pump to fill your hydraulics that's the way to go i'd do that and on this one i added a i added a fluid level so so that would those were the things that i did when i got the tractor uh that's all melted i have no idea why um so at the auction i got this uh reproduction brindley loop along with the reproduction straps and then the bottom bar i think came with a another uh like a 122 or a 102 that i had a couple years ago and then the top rock shaft is a homemade rock shaft that came on another old cup cadet wide frame that i had so i threw that combination of parts together and it's been working working quite well for me so one problem with the cup cadet design is that the all oh, the the rock shaft and the push rod were both from the homemade i think i'm done some repairs to the push rod because it just wasn't stout enough excuse me so um so for now it's working okay i think it's probably bent that's one of the one of the less ideal parts of the Cub Cadet design is that it uses a push rod, where if it used a pull rod, it would definitely work better. Uh, so, 
trying to decide what else I did. At one point along the line, I lost hydraulic pressure. And it took me a long, long time to figure it out. But in the end, I figured out that the pressure relief spring was shot. So to quickly get back to work, I just put a put some stuff in there. That, <laughs> there's probably I think there's a piece of a cutoff bolt and some lock washer. So basically, after that point, I just twisted it till, it was, till it had pressure. So basically. <sighs> There's almost no limit to what this will lift. I think its stock is 800 PSI. This might be at 1500 or 1600. I don't think it's, it's not deadlocked. It's just very, very high pressure. And the, the motor lift stop, I took that off. I think, I, I remember taking it off. I'm pretty sure I did that. And that's really about it. So this is all pretty nearly stock lifting setup that would have come with the Cub Cadet. So, and with the tires and chains, I'm able to pull a lot, especially with the front wheel, front weights. So, all right, about the plow. The plow I bought from a Mennonite chap, not, uh, not too far from here. He had it on his steel wheeled, cyclops 20 2084 i think the 20 horsepower uh magnum v no it's a v twin so maybe it's not a magnum it's probably uh um uh, boy i'm i'm drawing a blank right now but it was a 20 horsepower v twin so it would have been the series after the magnums and he had big heavy steel wheels on it three point hitch uh, category zero three point hitch he had the rear training cover with provisions for rear pto i'm not aware that he had rear pto so it was pretty beat up and the hood was broke and he ended up buying a john deere 10 10 uh 10 20 r it was a very new three-cylinder yanmar built john deere compact tractor so with four-wheel drive and a drive over deck so he, of course, loved this John Deere compared to the old Cub Cadet and is ready to get rid of it. So, so making note that it was a V-twin and it was steel wheeled. So he had uh, probably close to a thousand pounds in steel wheels, steel belting wheels. So uh, without a doubt that that Cyclops could pull and could pull incredibly hard. So if you'll notice, I made some mods to the plow. I flipped the coder upside down. I didn't really want to throw the coder, didn't really want to throw the coder away or anything. But I've had this extra piece made to try and get the plow further over. I might have welded it on the wrong side. But I had a lot of problems. I took this bracket off, flipped it around, trying to figure out how to make this plow correctly and this is this is my cover board so if you if you're if you're um if you're uh, aware of of big plows big tractor plows so i have a cover board up here and that'll basically take any grass or uh weeds that are standing up and it'll flip those into the furrow ahead of the rest of the dirt so your weeds end up buried under all the dirt. That way you get a beautiful, beautiful finish when you're done. Which, this plow here doesn't, doesn't turn over quite as nice as it might. So that was my solution to get the dirt all turn, turned over all the way. And I don't really care if it draws a plow out of the ground because it ends up having, you know, a full 8 inch of plowing depth. And that works very well, actually. I'm very happy with it. You can even see how it's bent because of the amount of force that it, amount of work that it's actually doing. So, straight off the hop, I had trouble with the plow. This is threaded inside. Those threads were stripped out, so I added a nut for thread. And I think this nut was part of the locking jam nut system for that. So this has worked very well. 
So basically what happened is as you're pulling through the ground, the plow wants to twist, wants to twist the whole plow frame. So let's cover up the, instead of going into that tangent, let's first cover the setting up of the plow. So an easy way to do it is I want to plow about eight inches deep with this setup. So I pulled up on an onto an eight inch block. And then we'll come over here. This is pretty important. This will also let you know if you've got any trouble with your plow. So the tip of my mole board is sitting flat on the ground. And the heel of the mole board is sitting flat on the ground. And then we'll come over here. This and it's very well possible that this plow is twisted. I've just, like I said, I just plowed a bunch of roots and a new whole new garden patch. I just came in. And then the heel of the plow is up off the ground. We can get a tape measure and quickly give you a reference. Um, this is actually set pretty high. This is a pretty aggressive setup. I'm going to try and get my tape measure out far enough. There we go. <clears throat> so this the tail of this plow is almost two inches off the ground. What you want is closer to three quarters of an inch. So <clears throat> basically it's pointed down into the ground. So that means it's trying to draw itself into the ground. And that's good for a dry, hard soil so you know if you want to do yourself a favor get out there as soon as it's dry enough for the tractor to get traction and even a cup cadet original could pull this plow i've i've been told now this <laughs> the setup pulls hard once you're ripping roots and stuff out of the ground i even plowed up a treated four by four granted it was pretty old and rotten but most of it is still there so that's basically it. <clears throat> Drive up on a block that's the same depth as you want to plow. And you can use the adjuster bolts on either side here to try and get your plow straight out the back. You, can, you can't really use the hole on either side of the middle. You shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to. If that's the case... <clears throat> It's possible that your whole plow frame might be twisted. So right now it's possible that mine's twisted because the heel of the shore back here should be off the ground. So basically, well, I got a loose, I got a loose bolt right here. So that's one thing to be aware of as well is loose bolts throughout the plow. Anything that can move around when you're plowing these guys right here get cranked all the way tight. And once they're tight, once they tighten up, as you're tightening them down, the plow will actually pick up. So that means that, first of all, these hitches don't, they don't move a lot. Basically when you're set up for plowing and you got it all the way up, the tip's just barely off the ground most times. It's, that's one thing that's kind of a struggle, it seems, for Cub Cadet plows. So what you can do is just grab your plow back here by the handle and move yourself up one pin. That'll raise your plow point several inches off the ground and you can transport it that way without ripping your whole yard to bits. Or if you're going down the sidewalk to neighbor's backyard, crossing flower bed, whatever, that's one way to keep from damaging everyone's nice yard. So, the coder, I'm not a coder fan. I don't think coders do jack. You might have a different opinion. And it might also be important to you if you're in corn stubble or something else that you want sliced through. My experience in plowing this area, plowing my whole life, ever since I was able to run a tractor, is I remember one of the first times I was out plowing for Dad. I got so frustrated these coders were shot. I picked up the plow. I went into the shop. I tore all the coders off the plow. I went back out and I plowed and I had no more problems. If the coder isn't cutting, and a lot of times, you know, being out where the where the 
Uh, fodder is damp. It'll pack up a big ball of fodder and choke up the plow and draw the plow out of the ground. And then you have to go back up and try again and back up and try again and try to work the ball out of the plow or get off the tractor and kick the ball out from under. Uh, that's when you know, that's when I take the coulter off, flip it around, stick it in there, throw it away. Probably never use it again. Because the way that the plow frame is open allows most of the stuff to go through. I have been out plowing just now. I had sticks that were over four foot long get passed through the plow. There was some stuff in the garden I picked up later. I had no idea I even plowed over it. So, um, so when I got the plow, when I first put it in the ground, I could not plow for the life of me. Later on, I figured out that the, the shin... I mean, the land side slide was actually kinked. I think it was kinked this way. So it basically wanted to walk around the tractor, or then it was kinked the other way. It's kinked one way or the other. But it wanted to walk around the tractor, and I had my steer tires turned all the way, had all kinds of weight on the front. It just wouldn't go straight. So very important, very important for you to set your shin straight with the tractor. You could try and go just a bit left or right to try and and adjust how much you're biting off with your plow because that also has a big effect on how the plow plows. If you're taking too big of a bite widthwise from the inside of your tire and the furrow to the tip of the plow, the shin, the shin over here on this side, this plow doesn't have a shin. It's a mole board and a, and a share, shore, shear. I don't know, I'm Mennonite Dutch, so. <laughs> so how much of a bite you take off is very important as well. Since this is a one bottom plow, you're kind of you're kind of free to, you know, adjust it as you will. You could take basically what I'm saying is you can take too much or too little of a bite. So once you get less than half of your shore cutting it'll start not turning over as well, where you'll have too small of a plow furrow for your tire. This tire is pretty big. It's a pretty big tire for a plow furrow. Um, I'm sure there's guys out there that, well, this is a 10 and a half. Some people might run 12s, but it's got to be, it's got to be tough, man. It's got to be tough. Uh, maybe this is a smaller plow. Maybe there's wider ones, but what I'm, what's important here is you shouldn't cut wider than your plow's cutting width or or it's just too much. It just won't turn over. The shore or the the plow will be too full of dirt to turn the dirt over properly. So trying to stay once you get in the ground, you look back, you take your second pass, and your tires in the furrow, you can see about how wide you're cutting. That's something to pay attention to because if you have a tractor that's heavily weighted up. Maybe you strike a root or a rock in the ground. You actually bend your plow frame. And then your plow might be trying to... Your plow point might be turned over this way and trying to run around the tractor. So, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should cover. So, once you get your tip set up like that, that's pretty important. Um, it's pretty important that your that your um, main beam of your plow is straight behind your tractor. Also, your land side, straight behind your tractor. If it tipped the other way, it's going to try and push the front of your tractor all over the place. You won't be able to plow, no matter how hard you try. Um, other than that, uh, try and cover this as quick as I can. I just don't want to miss anything. But once you know that your plow frame can be bent, I mean, obviously, if you hit it on the nose of the short shear, shear it's going to want to point the shear that way. And you'll know once your tractor starts trying to, trying to, basically, once your plow's in the ground, you'll be trying to steer to keep the front end in the furrow or out of the furrow or in the furrow. And once it gets bad, you won't be able to plow at all, no matter how much weight you add up front. So this 149, with the weight that it's got, there's nothing in the tires but air. Um, 
this will pull hard enough to bend the whole plow frame. I know I've said it, said it often, but there's a lot. There's a lot to setting up these plows. And you want your plow, basically adjust your, adjust your hitch here to where, uh, um, just put your hitch all the way down, take your pin out, let your hitch all the way down, and then put your pin back in. When you get off the block, you should be able to pick the tip of your plow just off the ground, not very far, probably. Um, oh. I was going to show you my pipe wrench. <clears throat> so when I plowed the sod garden up here by my house last year, I ended up having my pipe wrench hooked into here with a ratchet strap from the end of the handle up to the hoop on the tractor because my plow was getting twisted that bad. That was, that was really, really hard. So, um, even, even this morning or this afternoon, tonight when I set up to plow the new, new garden, I ended up sticking my pipe wrench on here and jumping on it to get my, get myself. These... These plows aren't, they're not, they're not an Oliver 548 or a, or a big international. They get bent. They're, I, that, that was one thing I could not have imagined, but I found it, figured it out the hard way. I think I, I think I, I just, I don't have an ability to put tools on tables, I guess. But I spent, I believe, two full days just learning, just setting up this plow. Because over time, stuff gets bent. Like, the hoop got bent from doing pallet fork stuff and whatnot. So, so that's it. Don't be afraid to explore and push your limits. Try new ideas with plowing. Um, so now that I've bent the plow frame back a little bit... I'm off, I'm off the ground here just a little bit, and that should correspond with how much I'm off the ground back here. So back here, I'm no longer off the ground two inches. I'm more, more like one inch, one inch here, and probably a little over half an inch here. So, so that means that my plow share, the whole plow is sitting flat or upright the way it's supposed to. So if I uncrank the crank, the tail of the landslide would drop down flat on the ground and the corner of the share should shear share should drop flat down on the ground. So that's about when you know that your that part is straight and then you straighten out your plow beam and yeah. I mean it's pretty hard to tell here in the camera or anywhere. I think I've even kinked this part by doing that. You can flip it around and put the pipe wrench in upside down and just lean on it. But all right, this is a long video, guys. I really apologize, but um, I tried to cover everything as good as I possibly could, so that you don't have to suffer through what I've suffered through, and so that setting up the plow is not is no longer a mystery. And also so you know that big tractors with lots of weight and traction and tough sod, they can bend a the plow. They can bend a the plow, especially if you back up and, and yank into it. You can feel the plow give. And this is not an Oliver 548. This isn't a big international plow. It just doesn't have the physical fortitude to take that kind of hit. And not bend so guys thanks for watching i hope you find this uh this informative and helpful um i should show you one more mod i've done on mine so this hoop was a little wide and i added the inside plate 
So that means that my pin can't cock itself. So that means there's no play in the hoop. That's one more way to get maximum amount of lift out of these things. Like I said, Cup Cadet could have done something better where you're, where you're pulling with, with, a, with a draw bar instead of pushing with a push rod. You could feasibly do something out of one by one square tube, that wooden bend or some pipe or something. Anyway, that's going to be it. Thanks guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video and uh, come join my channel. I try and be helpful like this all the time. See ya.